The Brilliant Stars set has made one of the best budget decks on PTCGO even better. If you are a brand new player, then Battle Sense Charizard is probably a good place to start. You can pick it up relatively cheaply using coins to buy the theme deck. Plus, on PTCG Live, you'll be able to access these cards really easily as well. This Charizard is super, super strong. It has two great pieces of text on it, so let's read through them together. Battle Sense, the ability means once during our turn, we can look at the top three cards of our deck, draw one, and then discard the other two. That's always good to get through your deck in these sort of one prize decks. Very, very powerful. And the attack synergizes with it quite well. For two fire energy, we use Royal Blaze, which deals 100 damage plus 50 more for every copy of Leon that is in our discard pile. With any luck, we'll have a Leon in the top three cards. We can grab a card, discard the Leon, and then deal some extra damage. The only issue with this card is that in the past, it's been difficult to get that to fire attachments. But now, thanks to the brand new Magma Basin Stadium, we can power up that Charizard really, really quickly. Magma Basin means that once during your turn, you may attach a fire energy card to one of your benched fire Pokemon, and that means that a fresh Charizard can be powered up in a single turn, making it a very, very potent threat. We also obviously have Choice Belt, which can push our damage all the way up to 330 to knock out pretty much even the biggest of VMAX Pokemon, plus we can even use the supporter Leon in order to get 30 extra damage. That means that this one prize attacking Charizard that can be powered up in a single turn can theoretically deal 360 damage. A massive, massive number for a one prize Pokemon to hit. Uh, some more cards that we play in the deck that are very, very good. Obviously, the brand new Moltres with Inferno Wings gives us a basic one prize attacker that we can use in the early game if we want to take knockouts on things like Sobbles that might have smaller amounts of HP. Plus, with a Choice Belt, Inferno Wings is actually going to be dealing 120 damage, which is nothing to sneeze at. A very, very solid attack. Plus, we also have a 2-2 line of Altaria, which does two things for us. Firstly, it's Tempting Tune ability puts a supporter of our choice from our deck on the very top of our deck, meaning we can guarantee that there'll always be a Leon there. Plus, it also has Free Retreat, which means that we can put this into the active and leave all of our Fire Pokemon on the bench ready to be powered up by Magma Basin. Now, I think that this Charizard deck is probably one of, if not the best places for a brand new player to start playing. It has the power to beat anything. It's consistent enough to get going. Plus, it is super, super affordable. So let's take it out of the ladder and see if we can't beat some of the better meta decks with our Leon Charizard. Battle Sense, pretty good. Alrighty, so we have ourselves a start here. We've got quite a few level balls in our hand, which means we can get ourselves a Charmander or two, plus also a Swablu. Um, our hand looks actually really, really good for next turn, and we've also managed to start with our Gormandize Snorlax. So, I'm feeling pretty good here. We'll attach and then Gormandize to allow us to draw up to seven cards in our hand, and then our turn ends. And it looks like we're playing up against the other Charizard that's been floating around at the moment, Charizard V-Star. Now, if you're looking for a list on this one, then I've definitely got one on the channel. If you want to see some kind of more rogue lists, then you are in the right place. Make sure you like this one and subscribe. And tell me what other videos you would like to see. I've got Brisbane Regionals coming up this weekend, which means I might be a little light on in the coming seven days, but after that particular event, we'll have a ton of meta decks ready for you if you are heading to Salt Lake City or otherwise. Okay, so we've got ourselves, uh, we've, we've had ourselves a bit of a turn here. Our opponent hasn't attacked, which means that we are in kind of, um, we're in a position where we don't need to attack right now, right? We're, we're kind of, we're kind of able to just take some time to set ourselves up. We are playing a deck that is all single prizes, and we know that our opponent can only ever take one prize per turn. So we are probably fine to just set ourselves up a couple of attackers. Kind of prepare ourselves a bit. We might grab Oranguru here. Actually, no, let's go with the Moltres. Um, because there's there's plenty that we can do, right? And all of these cards, we're, we're in just such a good spot. I feel really comfortable. Uh, Tempting Tune, we will put a copy of Leon 
on the top of the deck, and then we'll be able to draw that with Gormandize uh, and be able to discard it next turn if we want with Ultra Ball. We are still looking for energy and a uh, and a copy of Rare Candy to evolve into our Charizard, but that's okay. Like I said, even if our opponent does have a big turn where they are able to take a knockout, then we've got Cynthia's Ambition, we've got a bunch of cards that can discard, or we're being Marnied, so we shouldn't be talking about it, but that's what we're doing. Um, we've got a bunch of stuff that we can draw into, so we're looking, we're looking pretty good. Our opponent still needs to find themselves a double turbo energy to attack this turn, and uh, look at that, we've managed to get ourselves a pretty solid hand afterwards. Um, if our opponent takes a knockout, then we can simply put the Altaria in the active, go searching for an Oranguru, and guarantee that we hit the Cynthia. Um, if they don't take the knockout, then we can just uh, Gormandize one more time after Ultra Balling onto a Pokemon, uh, into a Charmeleon or something similar. So I'm feeling pretty good. Here comes the Starbirth. So they will be able to guarantee that they get that double Turbo Energy and the knockout if they want it. Um, but really, like there's, there's a whole bunch of stuff that we can do here. We're not in any real rush to take these KOs. We're not in a real rush. We know even if our opponent gets in front of us, we can still go on to win the game. Our opponent has two prize Pokemon and we don't. So we will never ever have any worries there. Now our opponent is uh, giving me a bit of a, a bit of a cross face there. Maybe he doesn't have access to double turbo. If he doesn't have access to double turbo, then he won't be using Trinity Nova this turn, which means he won't be getting a knockout and he won't be powering up a Charizard. So maybe an extra turn is on the cards for us. Now taking quite a long time with this search, so not sure exactly what they're going to go with. Uh, they grab their two cards there. Here comes a fire energy attachment from hand. All right, so there will not be a double turbo coming down. They don't have access to it, and they're just retreating into the Moltres, which, you know, is fair enough. Uh, well, in that case, we're kind of in this, um, we're in the, a really weird position where, again, we have this extra turn. We don't need to stress too hard. What I might do is I might attach... Um, I might attach this. Oh, let's just go with the Ultra Ball first. We're going to discard the Leon. We're going to discard the Altaria. Uh, and then we will go and grab ourselves a Charmeleon. We can evolve our Charmeleon. Uh, we'll go with the one that has the energy on it. Um, I don't really want to commit all of my energy to the same Pokemon, though. And then we'll Tempting Tune. I'm going to put another copy of Leon on top of the deck. That way we can guarantee it's in our hand. And we can either discard it or play it next turn. And then we'll Gormandize. Draw another six cards. Looks pretty good. And I tell you what, this hand is looking pretty, pretty good. I mean, if they take a knockout, which they probably will now that they've got their extra fire attachment, we have access to Leon, we have access to Cynthia, we have access to Charizard, we're being Marnied again, so we shouldn't be bothered about it. We're just going to get another four or five cards. Uh, the ones that we don't want now, but that's okay. It's going to be fine. Uh, we have a Leon in our hand anyway, and we've also managed to draw into our Orangaroo. So this is really good for us. Uh, it means a couple of things. Firstly, we can guarantee that we can get whatever supporter we want. Although, to be fair, we might actually be able to just Raihan this turn. I'm thinking, can we actually... I think we can actually get the Knockout here. Um, okay, so let's... Uh, let's go. We're going to put the Charm Manager into the active, because we are going to be retreating to discard the energy. Now, this seems really counterintuitive, but we can get the Charmeleon into the active here. Then, we can use Raihan to attach that energy to the active Charmeleon. Then, we can go and search. We will grab ourselves an Ultra Ball with that Leon. We can play down the Oranguru. We can use Tempting Tune here to get ourselves a Leon on the top of the deck. We can then use Primeape Wisdom to put the scoop up net on top of the deck and then we can ultra ball we can get rid of two leons that's an extra 100 damage for our charizard which we're gonna search out with this ultra ball uh then we also have choice belt and i'm 99 percent sure that three leons and a choice belt is 280 damage that seems pretty good we could also battle sense here if we want to we'll do that and grab ourselves i think just another charizard that seems fine we lose one to the discard pile, but that's all right. And then we can Royal Blaze, and this will be 280 damage. That's a lot. Real early on for this Charizard deck to be dealing. 280 damage is a ton of damage to be dealing. And we've managed to find the absolute perfect cards off of those prizes. A Fire Energy Attachment and a Rare Candy. That means we guaranteed to get ourselves a Charizard next turn. 
Uh, we can also use Altaria and Oranguru to give us access to whatever supporter we want. We can put Leon on the top and discard it with Battle Sense, or we can go for Cynthia and use that to draw eight cards if they take a knockout. You can see why this deck is so good now, as opposed to a few sets ago when it had just come out. Magma Basin makes this deck so much more powerful the ability to just power we've got we've got no charizard on our bench we have a charmander and that's it next turn we could potentially be dealing 330 damage right with nothing on our bench that is incredible to me and they kind of come through with the explosive fire that's fine they're going to take a prize we are going to promote our altaria with free retreat and then we can set ourselves up. We can rare candy into a Charizard, which is fantastic. We've got access to the fire energy, which we can use to attach. We can then use our Magma Basin to get the energy on the Charizard. We'll Tempting Tune, put the Leon on top, I think. Just guarantee that we get access to the full 300 damage this turn. Then we can Battle Sense. We can discard two cards and keep ourselves a rare candy. That way when we get our third Charizard, we will be able to easily evolve that. Then we can retreat. And uh, it looks like they're just going to concede from there. So powerful. This Charizard really, really good. So we've not caught quite as strong a start here as we had in our last game. But a single Charmander is perfectly fine. I mean, our opponent's playing Zacian, so we should be able to get an easy prize on that at some point. I'm going to get rid of the Raihan here and grab another Charmander. Um, I'm not expecting to be knocked out next turn, but I would like to get as many Charmeleons into play as possible. And we happen to have both of the Charmeleons from our deck in our hands. So, happy with that. Uh, looks to me like... Oh my god, why do I ever talk about what's happening in my hand? <laughs> Marnie is coming out. They're going to get rid of our hand and we'll draw a fresh set of four. It looks like with an Aurora Energy, we might be playing against maybe... Um, yeah, it looks like it's a Bronzong Box. I was going to say maybe something with Duraludon, uh, but a Bronzong Box kind of deck, which seems perfectly reasonable. I've got a Quick Ball here. They're going to get rid of Boss, and there is a Duraludon. Okay, so... Looks like we've kind of got a Duraludon box deck. I'm not too worried about it because we don't play any special energy, um, so we should be fine. It looks like we're going to have a really, really strong turn here. Marnie actually helping us quite a lot. We'll grab Charmeleon out. We'll put him down over here. We can play the Snorlax. We can attach the energy to the active and then retreat. We'll go into the Snorlax and then we'll just Gormandize. We won't play the Cynthia now. We'll wait. Next turn, hopefully, well, hopefully we get knocked out. Yeah, if we get knocked out next turn, then we actually have ourselves a really, really strong turn. So we, we'll wait and see. It looks like they're going to switch potentially into that Suicune. Draw themselves an extra card with Fleet Footed. That's always pretty good. Um, but yeah, they're looking for the Bronzong. Bronzong is by far the card that they want the most here. Looks like they're just going to go and gust up a Charmander and then use Intrepid Sword one more time. So, no dice from them there. Can we potentially get ourselves into a Charizard turn here? I think we almost certainly can. I mean, it's just a question of whether we want to. I'm going to get rid of this Snorlax. Grab ourselves a fourth Charmander. Put that into play and our Swablu can go down as well. Uh, we've got Fire Energy. We've got Ultra Balls. We've got Cynthia. I think we go and get rid of the Ultra Ball and the... Uh, Let's get rid of the rare candy to grab ourselves our Charizard. This way we can evolve the Charmeleon and we know that we will be safe to have an attack. The issue, however, will be whether or not we have access to enough stuff. And that battle sense is really bad. It's actually three cards that we really want to keep. I'll keep the Charizard, discard the other two, and attach to the Charmander. And I think we just collect here. Um, it's a little bit uninspiring, really. A little bit uninspiring. Maybe we should have discarded the Charizard and kept the energy, um, the Choice Belt or the uh, or the Magma Basin. That could potentially have happened. Um, our opponent now playing Marnie and shuffling our hand in. Obviously, we have our Charizard set on the bench, so that's not going to be knocked out. But we lose access to the Cynthia, which I'm not a fan of. And now we are in a bit of a bind. We're going to need to rely on Battle Sense to get us out of this hand, especially if they don't attack, which they haven't again. Okay, so I don't know how much more our opponent can sit and do nothing. They're just not finding their Bronzong. Uh, and we've just top-decked Cynthia's Ambition. Now, I want to say, whilst we play out our turn here, 
I actually think that we would be, like, it looks like we're going really slowly, but I think that we would be doing much better if our opponent would just knock one of our Pokemon out. They're just refusing to do it. It makes it makes our lives very, very difficult. Um, we have got access to our Altaria now and our Charizard. We've got lots and lots to do. Uh, we don't have a Leon in the discard pile yet. So what we might do is we might just get that on top with Tempting Tune. Uh, and then we could potentially use Battle Sense to discard it. I don't mind that. I'm gonna lose another Stadium here. Um, we probably want to keep that, uh, just because we have Rare Candy in hand, and we also have access to Charmeleon too, so it's not the biggest worry. Uh, and then I can play down that Stadium, and we can start accelerating energy to our Charmeleon, get ourselves ready. Again, we would be in a much better position if we'd been able to play Cynthia in the early game, but because they weren't doing anything, we couldn't. We're just going to sit behind Charmander again and draw another card, and uh, we just happen to have drawn into another Leon, which I'm pretty happy with. Our opponent has to be able to do something this turn. Surely they do something this turn. Surely. They can't sit behind a wall of doing nothing. This is, they're going to Marnie again. They're Marnieing again. Okay. So our opponent's deck is absolutely bricking up. And as a consequence, we are playing very slowly. But again, I don't think that it's because our deck is bad. I think it's because our main draw engine relies on our opponents taking knockouts. Which now they will. So they will have to take a knockout this turn. They'll be able to do it with Suicune. They're going to power up their Duraludon. And we'll actually see now, because our opponent takes a knockout, I almost guarantee that we are going to be able to set up some big, big turns. In fact, I wouldn't even be surprised if we can knock that Duraludon out. I mean, we, we did lose one choice belt, but I think we should be able to do it. Um, and considering the fact that we've got a Charizard in hand, we can get ourselves a second battle sense. We should be looking pretty good. We'll put the Artaria in the active. Because that way we can guarantee that any Pokemon that we want to accelerate energy to, we can. Uh, we will evolve into Charizard as well. Uh, then we can... Let's go with the Magma Base. We'll put the energy on the Charizard. We can attach to the Charmander. And uh, then I think we can just... Uh, we should probably... Hmm. What should we do here? What do we do? I should probably level ball first, but I think we can just Cynthia. It should be fine. We're going to draw six cards. Uh, all of those cards are pretty good. None of them are Marnie. Uh, none of them are Leons, though, which is a little disappointing. Um, we would like to see those. So we'll tempting tune. Put one on the top. That seems a okay by me. Then we've got access to a Rangaroo, so we can guarantee that that goes into our hand. What we'll do is we'll put the Cynthia's Ambition on the top of the deck. That way we can guarantee that we get it. Uh, I will quick ball here and grab the Moltres just to thin out of the deck, and then we can start utilizing uh, some of our other kind of cards to float around. We've got one Leon left in the deck. We kind of need that Leon pretty quick. Uh, let's um, let's Battle Sense. We'll just hit it, right? Oh, there it is. It's fine. We just, we just hit the Leon. So uh, we don't care about that. We're going to grab the Magma Basin just in case they respond. Uh, now that we've got the Leon, we don't really care. We can just go straight into our Charizard and do 250 damage. Um, our best possible case scenario is that the two prizes here we get are uh, one's a Leon, which would be great. And one is the Leon. Okay, beautiful. All right, so now, whatever our opponent puts into the active this turn, we can knock out, presuming, presuming that our opponent does not use Marnie. Now, they've played Marnie almost every turn of the game, so I don't think they have any left. They're just going to G-Max Pulverization. Beautiful. Okay, well, we are about to deal 330 damage to this Duraludon, a Pokemon that should be one of the bulkiest in the game. We're going to guarantee that we knock it out here. This is going to be incredibly good. We'll play down the Moltres just as a backup little attacker. We can put an energy on it just in case something goes wrong. We will play our Leon, and then we can retreat into our Charizard. Uh, we should probably use the Tempting Tune ability, even if it is just to look. There's two rare candies in the deck, so we can guarantee that at some point in the game, we will be able to evolve into our final Charizard, and we only have one prize left to take. There is no way that our opponent can possibly win the game from here unless they remove the two Pokemon they have on their bench and then set up another VMAX, a Duraludon VMAX. And even then, they still need to take four prizes. We're more likely to brick and deck out before they manage to take the win. So I think we are locked in here. And you'll notice, the second that they started taking prizes, we could actually do something. We could use Cynthia's Ambition to fill our hand up. And that's where this deck starts to get really, really strong. Uh, obviously, if you are playing a deck that can overrun your Charmanders early, you'll probably find yourself in a bit of an awkward spot. But to be brutally honest, there's not many decks in the standard format at the moment that can do that. And the fact that we were able to get so much 
in like in such a in like a couple of turns to get so much going uh, is a very very big deal. Now we've not been knocked out, which means we guarantee the win here. Uh, but we had the rare candy as well. That was going to happen. Charizard's pretty good. So thanks very much, everyone, for coming along. Thank you in particular to these people over here who have become channel members. Uh, we've had quite a few people who have joined over the last couple of days, so your name will be coming up as soon as I get around to fixing this background. Appreciate your support. Thank you very much. Also, if you'd like to see another Charizard deck, Charizard V-Star, then click this link. I think this deck's pretty good as well. To be honest, I don't know if it's better. You tell me in the comments which Charizard list is best. Thank you very much, everyone, and I'll catch you next time for more from the Sableyes.